If we're going to do this game room tour justice, then we need to do this shit right by starting where the collection first began, and that's right here. The little gray box that could, the pixel smashing, polygonal fist fucking, 32-bit majestic beast, the Sony PS1. Let's be honest, the PSX needs no introduction, but this shit's going to get one anyway because it's of legendary caliber. As a matter of fact, I dare say that it's my all-time favorite video game console of all time. And for good reasons. I can honestly and genuinely say some of my biggest video game memories are tied to this system right here. I mean, I think back to when the PS1 first came out, and I think of all the franchises, all the games that started right here or continued on there, and I'm just blown away. I mean, I think about when I first saw Crash Bandicoot pop up in commercials, and that motherfucker with his big wampa fruits rolled right out into Nintendo headquarters and talked endless shit on the company. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff. I got a little surprise for you here. Check it out. What do you think about that? We got real time, 3D, lush organic environments. How's that make you feel, buddy? You feel a little like your days are numbered? I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. You're hurting my elbow. We were seeing Nintendo versus Sega for a long ass time, and this was like, Sega does what Nintendo don't, version 2.0, taken to the next level. And I think about the bevy of titles, the endless array of RPGs and just bitchin' ass games that Squaresoft rolled out. I mean, these motherfuckers went and strolled up to Satan's house, went and knocked on that door, and they left their soul on his fucking welcome mat, and they were just like, totally worth it. We were getting the likes of Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, Tactics, Origins, Anthologies, Chronicles, then, Vagrant Story, Xenogear, Chrono Cross, Bushido Blade 1 and 2, Brave Fencer, Musashi, Einhander, Air Guys, it did not fucking end. I mean, these guys were just making everything. They were genre defining. All sorts of titles. They were making so much badass shit, it blew my mind. I mean, they were the shit on Super Nintendo, but on here, they went and just took it all the way to the top. And I loved it so much. I mean, hell, how many of us knew what the fuck survival horror was before the PS1? With the likes of Resident Evil and Silent Hill, two game franchises that have now transcended video games itself and have become a household name to even non-gamers. I mean, I hope this is not Chris's blood. And running around trying to go and find your way through the likes of Silent Hill, which was scary as fuck, and even nowadays I feel holds up. Granted, you know, it looks like shit, but it still holds a special place in my heart. Then we had Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, and you need more platforming goodness other than those two legendary titles. Well, we could go with Klonoa, Jumping Flash, we could go with Tomba. There was so many good ass games on there. And it had fighting games, it had racing games, it had everything that you could ever ask for. Hell, the import section for this is fucking astounding. And I think back to OPM getting the little demo disc and shit, even though we all know that PSM is a far superior magazine, always have, always will be. But the PS1 for me is not only one of the best systems of all time, but one of the best libraries of all time. I could stand here and talk for hours on end about the games I love, the memories I have with me and my best friends, thanks to this system right here, but it's the PS1, you already knew all that. We are officially four generations balls deep into the PlayStation family, and we're going from where it all began to where it is currently with the PlayStation 4. I think about the last four games that I have 
poured so many hours into, and I haven't done this kind of shit since back in the early 2000s on PS2, when I'm playing the likes of Persona 5. I'm well over 120 hours into that. Yakuza 0, over 100 hours into that. Uncharted 4, which is arguably the best installment in the series, which says a lot because I never thought that they'd make one better than 2, yet 4 rolled in, and I was just like, must tip my hat to you. That shit blew me away. I was just like, not bad, not bad at all. I poured in 90 hours onto Final Fantasy 15, and I still haven't done any of, the, any of the DLC, and that's thanks to this system right here. I mean, how I think about Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, which granted, I know that's a multi-platform title, but the amount of time that I played the console version, which is kind of an extraordinary feat when you think about it, because we most closely associate all Blizzard-related things to PC, and rightfully so, but god damn was it rocking on there. It was so fucking good. I was just like, you know what, Mayor, just, just, just take my money, take my time, take my hours. So much fucking fun. And I, I just enjoyed it a, a fucking ton. We've got tons of Resident Evil games on it. Resident Evil 4, 5, 6, The Origins Collection, which is 0 and 1. Now we got Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2, and we've got Resident Evil 7. Holy fuck. And if you play Resident Evil 7, you're in for one of the most intense experiences of all fucking time. I mean, this system has done so much that I wasn't truly expecting because it was slow to start, but now I'm just like, too many games. There's too many fucking games. As a matter of fact, what you see right here, this isn't even my entire PlayStation 4 library. There is a shit ton of games inside the living room. So this is just most of it, but there's probably like 20 other games sitting in there and counting. This is including the fact that I've imported quite a few games. Like I got Hotline Miami. I went and got Infamous First Light because why the fuck not? Devil May Cry 4. I mean, I had to go and pick these things up because I won physical versions of these games. You know, limited run games. Guess what? Most of the stuff that I wanted from them, that shit's physical and on the PS4. And I've just been enjoying the fuck out of it. I mean, I got that shit on launch and this to date was the very first system I ever had on day one. I've never had a system on day one, ever. I've had them maybe a couple months after, or maybe a couple years after, but never on day one. The PS4 was the first one, so for me, it's kind of special in that regard. But I've had such a blast with it, and I can't wait to go and talk about many of these games, because I want to go and review them, discuss them in greater depth, and I can't wait for many more titles that are going to be coming out. So, it'll be badass. All hail the mighty NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. This right here, boys and girls, is the system that brought back the entire gaming industry from the brink of extinction. What will the future bring from Nintendo? More hits like Super Mario Brothers. Arcade hits like Kung Fu. Nintendo has the most video game hits. Hogan's Alley, Duck Hunt, and more like Baseball and Excite Bike. And you can play them only on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. Ah, yes, the NES, the system that took my video gaming virginity. This cherry popping motherfucker right here was giving us the likes of Castlevania, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Kirby, you name it, shitloads of franchises began right here. I mean, in the 80s slash the 90s, the NES was churning out tons upon tons of excellent high caliber titles, and this for me was my first foray into video gaming. I mean, I got to pick up an NES controller and I had never got to experience a video game before, but when I pressed the button and I made that little pixelated motherfucker jump the first time, I was just like, I'm God! So the God Complex went and began with that shit, but seriously, it was just the coolest thing. Nowadays, we have video games on virtually every single device that you can fit in your pocket or even your fucking refrigerator, but back then, you needed a console or a PC. That was pretty much what you were limited to. I mean, we didn't have Mega Man before this. We didn't have Ninja Gaiden before this, but we did thanks to this. I mean, hell, think about the stuff that Capcom was going and churning out just thanks to them licensing up with Disney. We have Rescue Rangers, we have Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, and DuckTales. 
That shit was all on there. I mean, the Genesis had lots of very good Disney games, but Capcom was fucking killing it on here. You know, the Adventure Island series, which a lot of people will be like, yeah, but that's that, that's really not the real deal. You know it's just a reskin. and I'm like, fuck you, it's really fucking amazing. Master Higgins, even with his, like, derpy jaw thing. Yeah, I'd love to share that. I mean, the licensed games didn't stop there. Look at the Batman trilogy and the TMNT trilogy. The very first Batman game from Sunsoft is one of the best Batman games to date, and that shit was on there. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, well, the first one gets a lot of shit for being one of the most difficult challenges and hair ripping out fucking games that you've ever played. Just go see Angry Video Game Nerd if you need to understand the shit in a bit more depth and detail. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, and the Manhattan Project, those were some of my biggest memories ever. I mean, shit. I was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle junkie like every other kid out there walking, so I could beat those games literally with my fucking eyes closed. Like, I was like a goddamn fucking monster at those. Rolled on through with Michelangelo because, I mean, he was a party dude. Hooray! But this system, there's just, there's too much goodness on it. I could go on for hours about the franchises and titles that began on here, that started on here, the legacy that they've left behind, the fact that, I mean, Battletoads, I still haven't went and beaten that shit because it just, it, it, it seriously pisses me to fuck off. I know some people are like, that's real easy. Fuck you, it's really hard. And NES hard, there's a reason that they say that. This entire thing right here, most people are just like, yeah, but what about Demon Souls and, and Dark Souls and Bloodborne? Yeah, just, just play anything on the NES library. Like, everything was fucking challenging for no good goddamn reason. But I still have a lot of my fondest memories of playing this with a bunch of friends, going over to houses with stacks of NES cartridges, blown inside them, making that shit work except for, oh no, blinking screen in your center with the, your fucking toaster, trying to make that work, and eventually it would finally boot up, and you were playing Super Mario Brothers 3, because it's Super Mario Brothers 3. But it's the NES, I fucking love it. Microsoft finally said, you know what? Fuck it. We're done just doing exclusively PC only stuff. We're going to do console gaming. And it was met with not only a shit ton of skepticism from gamers around the world, but a ton of people who were just waving middle fingers all over the place because they were like, we don't fucking trust you, Microsoft. You can go and suck a big old barrel of dicks. But then the games came pouring out and the online experience and they were like, shit. All right, I bought one. For a lot of people out there, their main reasons for wanting to go and pick up an OG Xbox was Halo or the online experience. And those were some badass bitchin' selling points, but for me, the checkbox that I had to go and mark off, that shit had to be Sega. Sega! See, that shit, most people could sit there and scoff or maybe just kind of look at me sideways glance like, but it made a ton of sense. We got to see the continued legacy of the Dreamcast resurrected like a phoenix rising from the motherfucking gaming ashes in the form of a Microsoft console. I mean, we had House of the Dead 3, we had Crazy Taxi 3, we had Gun Valkyrie, we had Shenmue 2, we had Spike Out, we had Outrun 2, we had all these excellent games coming from Sega all on this system right here, and I was just fucking astounded. It was just like, holy shit, another Panzer Dragoon game? I didn't think that would happen, and Panzer Dragoon Orta was the fucking shit. I mean, granted, I still think Sog is a better game, but that's neither here nor there. They just did such a bang-up job with this, and they were throwing exclusives at them left and right, and I was just like, you have my money. I got to see new franchises like Otagi, Otoki, people always say it different, but those are two games that were just like, yeah, yeah, I, I want that shit right there. A hack and slash game where I get to play as death. Of course I want something like this. That sounds excellent. But we had Genma Onimusha. We had the Fatal Frame games. We had Silent Hill 2, which not only are all survival horror games. Yes, Onimusha 1 te still technically is. But they were director's cuts and upgraded versions of the ones that I played on PlayStation 2. So I automatically want to go and pick those up. Conquer Live and Reloaded, 
we got a full-on remake of the original Nintendo 64 game, which is one of the best the entire system had right on here. I still remember the first time picking up the Duke controller, and a lot of people go and laugh about it, but I have all this nostalgic feelings towards it, because that thing, not only was it massive and it could double as an aircraft carrier, you felt like you were in a fucking strongman competition going picking a fucking gun show and shit. It was fucking preposterous, this big ass emblem in the middle of it, it looked like a fucking rapper's gold chain dangling right above their fucking dick. It's like, is this, is this serious? But I still like it. And then the S controller came out and that became like the go-to controller. But still, the Duke controller, it, it's, it's a legend onto itself. Microsoft followed up the OG original Xbox with the Xbox 360. Where you do a 360 and walk away. The 360 did give us a shit ton of things such as Dude Bro Shooters Out the Ass achievements and the Kinect. You know, the Kinect. Yeah, that, that, that's good stuff. But in a sea of mediocre things, there was tons of kick-ass titles on there, such as lots of survival horror goodness. We had Deadly Premonition, which is just Twin Peaks, the video game. And that's fine. Dead Rising, the very first game that I had on the 360, it's, it's Dawn of the Dead but I get to dress up like Mega Man every so often, go pew 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 and fuck up zombies. I mean, that's really good. If, if anybody's gonna tell me, oh, uh, you know, power bombing and doing wrestling moves to zombies isn't all that great, fuck you up your stupid ass. I have a Kinect. Yes, it came with a 360. Don't sit there and fucking mock me. Okay, Skibbles, that's enough, please. <laughs> Xbox, play music. Alright, alright, so now I can listen to Justin Bieber. But Rise of Nightmares, that shit's so bad it's good. I'm not kidding, that's actually worth having Connect for, so you can go and get that. But there's RPG goodness on there. We had Lost Odyssey, which technically should just be Final Fantasy XIII, and everybody can sit there and be like, Well, Alpha, I actually really- SHUT UP! Like, that, that game sucks. It sucks barrels of fucking Donkey Kong schlong, and you don't even need to be near it because you have Final Fantasy XV and all the ones before that. A plus stuff, but Lost Odyssey? Yeah, it's- Dude, Kaim is the fucking man. That's all there is to him. My favorite Tales game out of the entire Tales series, Tales of Vesperia, is on the 360. Still exclusive, at least here. We didn't get that awesome PS3 Director's Cut version. I don't understand why they're gonna like... Oh, man. All those Americans can go and eat a big old fucking long log of shit. Fuck them. So that kind of made me unhappy. The system had a lot of good shit on it. I always tell people, go and pick up those games now because they cost jack shit. All last generation stuff like 360, PS3, Wii, it costs fucking nothing right now. And the 360 is overloaded with kick-ass games on it and you should get it, because I said. I don't know how many Red Ring of Death discussions I had last generation, but it was too many to count. I mean, most of the time, you'd see people mourning as if they just had a loved one pass away from fucking terminal cancer. Now it's their 360 they kick the bucket and they got a big old fat fucking stack of games that they can't play right now and they don't have the moolah or cash flow to go and buy another one. So they're kind of just sitting on their hands all fucking antsy and they're just like, well, <laughs> this is it. I'm fucking done. Bam. Done. And that's really it. And with that Persona 3 references going forward, it's a sad day. Oh, that startup sound, how you are going to be ingrained in my memory until the end of time, which, by the way, on this system, Star Ocean till the end of time, the best damn entry out of the entire franchise. This is a motherfucking wall of PlayStation 2 games. No joke, an entire actual wall of PS2 games. 128-bit splendor, this goodness that stands before you. It's the biggest damn library in all of console gaming and the best-selling system of all time, at least to date, so far. Who knows if that crown's ever going to be taken, but the PlayStation 2 is a gargantuan monster amongst gaming. You figure this is where not only did a bunch of franchises begin, but a lot ended up going and hitting their stride and just off and fucking running. 
I mean, think about Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto was already a bitchin' ass series on PS1. A little top-down game, awesome as shit. Go around, shoot people, kill people, steal stuff, bang fuckers, leave them for dead, you know, take their money. Why the fuck not? Now we're doing it in the third dimension. Now we're doing it in an open world setting. Big old sandbox adventures, and now we're playing Grand Theft Auto V. But GTA 3, that's where that shit started. Still going to say that Vice City's my favorite, but that's beyond that point. Final Fantasy X, which I still say is one of the best damn Final Fantasies that we've had to date. Yeah, that shit was on there. By the way, when I got my PS2, got the PlayStation 2 off-brand memory card because we all know when the PlayStation 2 first came out, yeah, there was like no memory cards at all. The great epic epidemic of no memory cards! It fucking sucked really bad. You wanna save your game? Tough titties, you can. But I got Final Fantasy X and Grand Theft Auto 3. I was good to go. Over a hundred hours put in on both games throughout my initial playthroughs. There was much love. Much love to be had right there. The RPG train continued from PS1 all the way to PlayStation 2. Between Shadow Hearts and Persona, I was, I was good to go. All the Shadow Hearts games, they are amazing. I'm still waiting for an HD collection of them. I know it probably won't happen, but damn it, do I want that. It's just so fucking much. But the Persona series. We got Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. We got the Devil of Summoner series. We got Digital Devil Saga 1 2. And we got Persona 3 and 4. And Persona 3 FES. I've played all of them and beaten all of them. That's fucking dedication right there. But that just goes to show the system, if you are in love with that genre, this is one of the systems that you want to go to and pick up everything that you can. It had PlayStation 1 playback. The fact that the PlayStation 2 had playback of an entire library of its games the previous generation before made it a no-brainer to go and pick that up. And my fat booty PS2, dude, I played that thing to death for over a decade until inevitably it just gave up and died. But you want to know what? Some of the best years of my life were with that shit and my tube television Samsung TV that I got on Christmas years ago. We got the Beautiful Joe games, got Haunting Ground, got Roll of Rose. There's no end to the amount of titles, and I'm missing out on so many that I could be mentioning, but like, Alpha, what about this? Motherfucker, I'm not making this a 30-hour video. There's just too many games. You figure worldwide, I think there, there's like 2,500 games released, and just here in the States, we had 1,800. That's fucking sick. And this right here is only like 400 something games. And most of which I paid jack shit for because nobody cared about them for the longest time. Now they're slowly creeping up in price. But I have memories of so many of these games. I've beaten so many of them. I mean, shit, look at Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Two of the best platforming franchises. They started on here. And again, there's just so much more. I could go into it for hours, but it's the PlayStation 2 and you already know it's great. Get in or get out. It's the fucking Nintendo 64. 64! 64! 64! It was the year 1996. A mini Omega Sin was gifted. The glory of Nintendo 64 that particular Christmas, and it was amazing. I got Wave Race 64, and I got to see water physics so fucking good it made me thirsty. Yes, even looking at it now with their jagged ass fucking low polygonal characters, they're riding around on Kawasaki jets. That shit is amazing and still one of the funnest games that I know of on the system. But I also had Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Didn't have Super Mario 64, I wish. My mom looked everywhere and anywhere. She went to Sears, she went to Walmart, she went to Kmart, she went to any store that she could find. She went to Hills, yes, that shit was around back then. She went to Ames, yes, again, that was around. Radio Shack, there's some Hills still around in a few locations, don't know. Anyway, that doesn't matter. We don't need to talk about a whole bunch of brick and mortar stores that are suddenly gone, but I got MK Trilogy, later got Super Mario 64, but this, was an amazing time for me because I was able to play lots of awesome multiplayer games. I had GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Super Smash Brothers, you name it, we were kicking the fuck out of each other in a bunch of things. But then think about the platforming heaven that most of us were in as kids when it came to Nintendo and Rare. With their powers combined, we had Super Mario 64, we had Kirby, 
We have Banjo and Kazooie. We have Banjo and Tooie. We had Conker's Bad Fur Day, an actual extremely mature rated game that gave no fucks at all and did whatever the hell it wanted. And everybody wanted that game so much. They were like, "Holy shit!" Like people kept on mocking it, said, "Oh, you're the fucking kitty system. Nobody even gives a fuck about you. Suck a big old dick." And then that came out. They're like, "Oh, well, shit." <sighs> that. Mm, mm. Also, one of my favorite racing games, F Zero X. If you find the F-Zero X Guitar Range soundtrack, holy shit, it's just, it's headbanging goodness. It's so fucking badass. I love the shit out of it. It's, it's literally, genuinely, one of the best soundtracks ever in gaming. And that shit was on there. Granted, F-Zero GX is my favorite F-Zero, but if I could take the soundtrack from that, blend that shit together, I'd be so happy. But there was a lot of other good stuff. Paper Mario, which I love the Paper Mario series. I know most people are like, everything after a thousand years door is not even that fucking good. Yeah, well, I still like all of them. But it began on the Nintendo 64. Snowboard Kids is really good. The Legend of Zelda games. Do I even really need to go and talk about Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask? I mean, what, what fucking ground hasn't been covered yet about it? And by the way, I like Majora's Mask more. Ha! Ha! Go on, boo, and thumbs everything down. I don't give a fuck at all. I really do like Majora's Mask more. I, I blame it on the dark tone of everything. It's just, it's a creepy fucked up game underneath. Like, that that's my main reason for liking it as much as I do. Uh, I mean, the time system in it's kind of annoying, but you know, you get over that shit quick once you learn how to go and play the game. There's far too many games for me to talk about on the N64. I mean, I could bring up Star Fox 64, I could bring up Doom 64, I could bring up Harvest Moon 64, Mega Man 64. There's no end to this list. I could go on forever about it, but you already know, the system's fucking amazing. And seriously, go listen to the F-Zero X Guitar Range soundtrack. It's so good. Sega ta Sanshiro, Sega ta Sanshiro, Sega ta Sanshiro, Sega. Asobi no michi ni tamashi kometa, hitori no otoko ga kyo mo yuke. Majime ni asoba no yatsu ra ni wa karada de oboe saseru zo. Sekito Sanshiro is the best video game mascot ever! That is a fact. Nothing that can be refuted, disputed, or even matched. Because he's amazing. I mean, he saved the entire world. And he trained with a Sega Saturn. Motherfucker was amazing. And speaking of, woo, Sega Saturn is the system that, back in the day, I didn't give a shit about it until right after it was completely done and Dreamcast was out. Then I started caring about the Sega Saturn. What a fool I was! Because this thing is filled with excellent titles and arguably the best import scene of any console out there right now. I mean, I've got tons of imports all down under here, but the Saturn was something I was, I, I was seriously balls deep in PlayStation 1, just playing the shit out of that. And I had my Nintendo 64 enjoying that but didn't have the money for a Saturn, didn't really give a fuck, and then when I did get my hands on one, the very first game that I got was a Darkstalkers game. And Capcom hooked up the Sega Saturn with so many bitchin' and badass 2D fighters. And if you ended up getting any of the RAM expansion cards, then you got to play things that not only in were arcade perfect, but in some ways were better than all other future versions on beefier hardware. So that's kind of impressive, but you got beat-em-ups like Guardian Heroes, which it took me forever to get a copy of that game, and I know that you can get an HD version and <laughs> glorious high definition on the Xbox 360 and other shit, but that's OG original shit right there, and I was happy to go and get that. Die Hard Arcade. Okay, th this is gonna seem like a weird one to go and pick out from the bunch, but you have to realize that the main movie theater that I went to, I played this every single time I went to that theater, until they no longer had the arcade machine. And, you know, so rest in peace and all that shit. But then I had a copy that I could play at home. Granted, it is a fucking ruthlessly difficult game. And it's really nothing like Die Hard, let's be honest. I mean, it, 
It's it's just not. It's a fucking dynamite cop game. But still, I just I have a lot of fond memories of that. And when I got a, a home version of it, I was happy as fuck. Magic Knight Ray Earth was my first RPG on the system. Getting RPGs on the Saturn is kind of a bitch because most of them come from either Sega or they're coming from Working Designs, and Working Designs was just like, here, have all the great games, because they, they did. They hooked this shit up. I mean, Albert Odyssey, Magic Knight, Ray Earth, and dun, 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 Dragon Force, which that took me quite a while to go and get a hold of, and Sega Ages, just too damn many. But Magic Knight Ray Earth, that made me want to go and get into the anime and shit. But I really like that. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. I mean, you could you could seriously run through it in, like, maybe a day or two. It's not nearly as long as you would expect. And there's a lot of short RPGs out there, and sometimes I kind of crave that because RPGs are just like, Do you have a hundred hours? No, I don't. You can't fucking beat this! Oh, well, that... Ugh, that, that sucks bad. Many of these games, they are exclusive to the Saturn, and they're not on anything else, and I think that sucks so bad because a lot of gamers are missing out, and this shit's getting expensive as fuck. Like, when I... I built up my Saturn collection when it cost nothing. Like, no one gave a fuck about it, so I was just getting the games. Now, people are starting to realize, oh, really good-ass games, no other way to experience them, and they're having to go and pick that shit up, but I love the Saturn. It's seriously one of the best fucking systems that I, I collect for in general, like, I genuinely am enthusiastic about getting stuff for this because it's just a lot of fun, but yeah, it's Sega. Fucking love it. Why the fuck did the PS3 have such weird commercials? I know that's not a way to go and start off an introduction for a system that obviously I like a whole lot, but their commercials were weird as shit. Okay, all weird as fuck commercials aside, the PS3 is gaming excellence, and that shit started off so fucking horribly. 599 US dollars. 599 US dollars. 599 US dollars. 599. You were in dead fucking last place that console generation up until the end, and they turned out to be in second. But this library has been growing and growing, and I just kept on finding more and more exclusives and just obscure-ass games. Sure, I like all of my random weeaboo shit from Japan and stuff, and my RPGs and my horror games and stuff, but there was a lot of awesome shit to also import from the likes of PAL regions and from Japan and shit, because backwards compatibility, which is nice. And if you got the fat booty PS3, then you've got PS1, 2, and 3. This library, though, I mean, let, let's just rattle off a couple things. To begin with, 3 Game Heroes. I mention this game almost every single opportunity and chance that I can get when talking about the PS3 for one main reason. It's the best Legend of Zelda game that's not called The Legend of Zelda. And that shit's the truth. Atlas ended up putting together one of the coolest little adventure titles Ever. My very first Yakuza game was Yakuza 3 on this, and then I went back, played the older ones, and 3 is still one of my all-time favorite ones, because we got 3, 4, and Dead Souls all on the PS3, and totally worth playing the shit out of it. As a matter of fact, pour as many hours as you can into it. I mean, I played 0, and I love the fuck of that. I'm really looking forward to the remake of 1, but 3 is where I got my start. Get those games, get them, play them, enjoy them, love them, bow down before them because they are beat em up royalty. This system has a lot of awesome games. I could go on for hours and hours and hours and tell you about all of them. There's so many. I could tell you about how much I love the Dead Space series because I got to try it on there first. I could tell you about the Uncharted series because it just blew my fucking mind. I was playing Dude Raider. It was like, this is fucking amazing and it's not like Angel of Darkness from Tomb Raider which made me fucking die inside, quite frankly. But it was. It's, it's a really, really kick-ass system and the games are super fucking cheap now so get them while you can before they become hard to find. So you still don't have a Sega CD? Huh? What are you, waiting for Nintendo to make one? <laughs> you then shit can that, it turns into the PlayStation and you get left with the Philips CDI? I mean, you're missing out on all the greatest games.
What about Black Hole Assault, which clearly isn't a porn title? Who shot Johnny Rock? I mean, who's forgetting that classic? I mean, you could get Cobra Command has nothing to do with G.I. Joe, but you need some motherfucking Night Trap. That's what I think that you need. Or Bram Stoker's Dracula, because that turned out to be one hell of a fucking gem right there. This is the Sega CD. It could be worse if you attach a fucking 32X to it like the goddamn fucking plastic tumor that it is, and it could be like a little mushroom cap like Toad wears all the time. But instead just stick with Sega CD only stuff, because you can get Lords of Thunder, only one of the most metal fucking albums in the entire gaming world, got Lunar 1 and 2 because they're only some of the best RPGs ever. This is where they began, but like I said earlier, I started off playing them on PS1. But it gets even better, Snatcher. Granted, it's one of the most expensive games on the system, but let's be honest, it is so fucking good. Hideo Kojima, he fucking nailed it with that shit. It was just, oh god. The entire story of it, it's good. Gillian Seed, you're the fucking man. Plus, I, I bought a Snatcher shirt. There's a reason behind that. I've been enjoying all these on my Sega CDX. Like, I've got a regular Sega CD Model 1, I've got a Model 2, and I've got the Sega CDX. I wish I could get a JVC XI at some point, just because it's a bitchin' little system. It looks neat. I like it a whole bunch. But the CDX, it shit's like built like a tank. It genuinely is. It's so fucking awesome. But that's why I've been playing all these on, you know, and avoiding games like Willy Beamish. Don't ask how the fuck that got into my collection. It's just there. So, you know, because you won't have a Sega CD, you're missing out on Willy Beamish! Oh, shit on me! I, you know what? I fucked up. I fucked up, everybody. Wasn't playing Willy Beamish. I know that I could be going out there and playing the Space Adventure, which is every bit as good as Snatcher, just like Rise of the Dragon, but I'm not playing Willy Beamish. Clearly, somebody fucked up. This motherfucker right here. You see this? This is the face of fucking up, apparently. And the adventures of Batman and Robin, Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, Pop Full Mail. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of good games on Sega CD. Just do a bit of digging. Or do the smart thing and get like the Kega emulator and just do all that shit for free because most of these have never had a re-release. And that sucks. Genesis does! 16-bit. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! 16-bit power. This shit right here was the biggest deal to most motherfuckers out there, and then the mighty Bit Wars took place. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. This shit right here was a huge part of my childhood. We had an NES the entire time. Then my brother came home with this in a stack of games because he had a friend named Spaceman and Spaceman fucking robbed somebody, then sold all his shit to him for like dirt cheap. This is, this is my life, this is my familyhood, this is, these are my memories, but I swear that they're good. But all this shit right here is some of the best games that the system has to offer. Fantasy Star 4 is not only the best Fantasy Star of the entire series, I know everybody talks about the online games, but I miss the turn-based, straight-up, single-player role-playing experience that Fantasy Star was known for. And 4 is a gargantuan day. Dude, this game came out at a hundred fucking dollars. You know how we're thinking to ourselves, man, $60, that should cost too much. A hundred bones. Back in what, like 93 when this shit came out? 94? I have no fucking clue of the year that it was released. All I know is if it wasn't for my friend Sean introducing me to like Fantasy Star 2, then 4, I would never have gotten to try it, and I'm thankful for that because Fantasy Star and Shining Force, a huge ass deal on the system. The Streets of Rage series. Streets of Rage 2 is still one of the best soundtracks in the entire world, one of the best beat em ups in the entire world, one of the best 16 bit games, one of the best Genesis games, one of the best Sega games. It literally has accolades at the ass just spilling off of it. All these championships! What do I do? It's that fucking good. I've beaten the game like a million one times, by the way. Go watch my Let's Play of it. <laughs> yeah, look at that! Self high fiving and all that shit. Thunder Force 4 is on there, and I'm not saying Lightning Force. I'm sorry, I, ca I can't do it. Lightning Force. Lightning Force. That shit actually says it on there. It's Thunder Force 4. Let's just call it what it is. 
and it's got an extremely metal soundtrack. Plus, Metal Squad is the name of one of the tunes on there. Go look that shit up, you'll appreciate it. Told people time and again, just like, check these out. There's that Sonic's Genesis collection, which you can go and pick up on PS3 and 360. That's filled to the brim with tons of good games on there. This is the Sega Genesis. It's a huge part of a reason why Sega became a household name amongst everybody in the entire gaming sphere. And it all began here. Unless you were over in like South America or certain parts of Europe and shit where the Master System reigned supreme and still does even today. But this right here, this was the reason why I loved them so much. Dreamcast was Sega going out on a high note because this system was one of the best damn things that they ever made. Look, I love the fuck out of my Sega Dreamcast. I do. I loved everything about it. The fact that I won my Dreamcast in a fucking raffle months after it came out, and I was able to buy one game for it because that's all I could afford, and it was House of the Dead 2. I don't want to die. My God. I played that motherfucker to the point that I could not get hit. I just roll through the game, capping every single undead thing that decided to go and jump out at me. If you put me into the arcade, I'd be spending a whopping 50 fucking cents to best the shit out of the machine while everybody just looks on awestruck because that's all I had. But the Dreamcast, and even though it's a loud as fuck machine, I'm talking, it sounds like construction equipment and dental equipment combined together having an orgasm. sounds so fucking loud is beyond me. I was always expecting it to catch on fucking fire and demons to rise up out of it, complete with sonic fiction, fan fiction in each fucking hand, and then run off into the night, never to be seen again, and, and we don't want to see them ever again, and we won't talk about blue arms because we got a certain Christine Chandler that might get pissed off. Don't call anybody. Oh, what the first time I played Sonic Adventure, I played that shit in EB. I still remember the long ass line of people that were waiting patiently and feverishly like, I can't wait to get my hands on this shit. And everybody went up to that kiosk and started playing it and Sonic Adventure was just, dude, you're going through that so fucking fast. You have that big ass whale that's destroying the entire pier and shit and you're just jumping and flying over everything and catching all sorts of rings and I was just like, Oh my god! And it was like having the Saturn 3D controller, but with a little VMU inside of him, like, I can't believe this is a thing. Memory cards now with screens and their own little buttons. The future is now! And it had online gaming built into it, which granted, we had online gaming with the Saturn as well, but at the time that this came out, it was 1999, a lot more people actually had the internet, so this was a massive fucking deal. Shenmue's arguably the best game on there, and from that generation, oh my god, it was just so fucking great. I mean, I still remember seeing magazine scans for it in all sorts of mags back in the day, and it was just like, dude, I want to play this so fucking bad. And we're apparently possibly getting a remake of it. We got the third one that's going to be coming out, and I talked about how much I enjoyed Shenmue 2 on the Xbox, and Green and PAL regions, they got to have Shenmue 2 on the Dreamcast. We didn't. Like, I, I imported Headhunter. That's a thing. Still can't afford Shenmue 2 in the PAL regions, but eventually I'll get my hands on it. But this system is awesome as fuck, great to import for, lots of good fighting games, lots of good arcade ports, it's just an awesome ass system, and if there is ever a way for Sega to exit, this was the way to do it. It's time to rev up those Wii Fit balance boards. Get your fucking bodies ready as we go and plunge our happy asses headlong into the shovelware magnet itself, the Nintendo Wii. My body is ready. <laughs> okay, so I can take the piss out of the Nintendo Wii, no pun intended, for hours on end because Let's be honest, it's fucking infamous and notorious for the amount of shuffleware bullshit that plagued every single shelf. I mean, how many times were you seeing this at Five Below's or at dollar stores with tons of games out there that still were worth your time? So you can see right here, I'm, I'm getting ready to serve. All I do is throw that ball up in the air, and when I... Oh, jeez! 
And there goes the tennis racket. I mean, shit, I remember seeing a lot of game compilations that essentially were nothing that you had already seen a million times over on free Facebook games or on various different Flash game websites. Yet, they were being sold at like $20 a pop on the poor Nintendo Wii. But amidst all the bullshit, as soon as you go and cleanse that from your brain, you get to find out that there's a boatload of really worthwhile games on the system. Despite the fact that I hate all the fucking waggling bullshit and the gimmicks out the ass, which there were plenty, we were left with a lot of solid titles. We have the Resident Evil Chronicles series, which is just on-rail shooter series that's taking you through Resident Evil 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, everything in between. Those were more closely associated with House of Dead, but think of House of Dead with much more interactive environments. And I love the fuck out of them, and graphically they stood the test of time. There's an HD version on PlayStation 3 that's worth picking up, which you can use to PlayStation Move, which is nothing more than a Wii Remote with a fucking butt plug on top, but we already know all about that shit. We got Sonic Colors, which it's weird to think that most people just focus on how bad shit like Sonic Boom and Sonic 06 is. Meanwhile, we had Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors yet they get no acclaim and no attention at all, but that game's fucking awesome. I'm hoping for a re-release of it, because when I seen it in 1080p running in glorious high definition on the Nintendo Wii emulator, it's just like, this is fucking awesome. Thank you, Dolphin emulator. It's just hard to go back to that shit. We have Mad World, which, that game, I just, I don't get how it didn't get any fucking love. I mean, visually, the appeal of it aesthetically was enough for me. It's a black and white game, so just like you see in the old school paper, uh, newspaper comics, take that, but just add in gallons of blood. And think The Running Man. So you have a game where you're just trying to live and you're murdering tons of motherfuckers? That's Mad World. That's Mad World in a nutshell, which I think is a pretty accurate way of going and describing it. I could actually go on for hours. I know some people are going to be bitching and complaining, Why didn't you mention this and this and this? You can't mention every single fucking game on it. And there's still more titles that I want to get for this. I was just happy that it was filled with this many good-ass titles. It's just kind of a shame that most of them have been exclusive just to this system, haven't gotten re-releases at all, haven't gotten HD versions. Do not just safely assume the Nintendo Wii is just filled with a bunch of bullshit. I assure you, if you dig, you'll find proper titles on there. It's just, you have to go and dig and look. And considering that this is a last generation system, and Nintendo Wiis, you can find them for like 20, 30 bucks a pop. It's easy to go get into the system, start collecting, so, I don't know, start finding shit. Oh, don't worry, our Wii chat doesn't end there. Let's go from one Wii on to the next, double dangler style, the Nintendo Wii U. All phallic dick jokes aside, the Wii U is a solid system. Okay, maybe one more. But the Nintendo Wii U was still packed to the brim with tons of solid titles. I mean, good ass games that not only were AAA worthy titles, but many of them were million sellers, which kind of blows my mind thinking of how small the library is, yet many of those games sold astonishingly well. I mean, the first time that I picked up Super Mario Maker, not only was I given one of the best games that I had played in a long ass time, but an actual online community that I felt compelled to invest in as well. And that doesn't happen often. I'm not much of an online competitive multiplayer type person. I prefer couch co-op. But this was something where I went to create things and post them on there. The Legend of Zelda ended up getting represented pretty well on this system because, well, we got Twilight Princess, we got Hyrule Warriors, we got Wind Waker, and Breath of the Wild. That's four Legend of Zelda games on one system, and sure, some people go and argue and debate about Hyrule Warriors, but I really like Dynasty Warriors style games, and I thought that was one of the best incarnations of such a style with Nintendo overseeing it. You already knew it was going to have the utmost quality applied to it, because they would never allow it to go and take a big ol' fucking nosedive. You know, like the CDI games. But we don't need to go and talk about that shit. We were fortunate enough to get Bayonetta 2, all thanks to Nintendo, and that shit is on the Nintendo Wii U. I mean, most of us didn't think we'd see a sequel to Bayonetta, which is kind of blasphemy when you think about it, because the first one is 
fucking insanely, incredibly awesome. I was just like, dude, this is fucking the shit. Look at this. It is so good. I mean, the last time I felt that way, Duffel May Cry. Bayonetta comes around and it's just like, hey, I'm the female Dante and I'm not fighting demons, I'm fighting angels. This is fucking awesome. Let's rock. And everybody was. Nintendo went and saved the day because nobody else was willing to foot the bill for the publishing rights to it. And we got Bayonetta 2. Thank fucking Nintendo. The Wii U's a system that I'm always going to end up defending, despite all of its faults, because at the end of the day, I go and I judge any console, any handheld, any platform in general, based off of the library that it has, and the Nintendo Wii U has an epic library, along with the Nintendo Wii. Both of them, again, easy to go and take the piss out of and mock the living shove and just give the fucking middle finger, but truth be told, they have awesome games and that's all that matters. The Nintendo GameCube, the purple little lunchbox that could and would and fucking did, went over Nintendo fans everywhere. The GameCube came out originally, people were mocking and ridiculing the living fuck out of it because it showed up without a Mario game, heaven fucking forbid, at Luigi's Mansion, which is weird because I love the fuck out of Luigi's Mansion, but it's not a tried and true Super Mario Brothers game, it's a brand new IP and we're gonna bitch that we don't get new IPs even when you give us... It's weird because Luigi's Mansion was a lot of fun. I mean, it's not your tried and true survival horror game, but it kind of is. I just like this game a lot and it's like, holy fuck, when I got to play it at Media Play, remember that, I was like, holy shit, this game's a lot of fun. I mean, we're going around with the Poltergust 3000 or 2000, whatever fuck it is, and we're kicking the living fuck out of a bunch of unique ghosts inside of this mansion, trying to go and actually be the one saving Mario, saving the entire day inside of a haunted ass mansion. Of course I'm going to dig something like this. The Super Mario world combined with all sorts of spooky shit, I'm into that. I always like all the boo houses in different Super Mario Brothers games. This was just giving me that, but exclusively and solely that. There's not a single fucking snowball's chance in hell that I'm going to talk about the Nintendo GameCube without mentioning the splendor that is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. We are talking about arguably one of the best games on the entire system's library, which says a whole lot. And to me, it's the best Paper Mario of the entire franchise's illustrious history. But this right here, this gave us Rock Hawk. Okay, let, let's get something out of the way. He's a hawk who is a pro wrestler that talks like Hulk Hogan. That right there automatically means that it wins. No questions asked. You can't go and argue and debate it. Moving on. The Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil Zero, you know where they started at? Right here on the Nintendo GameCube. I mean, sure, if you like Resident Evil, the GameCube's one of the best systems that you can go for because you get Resident Evil 2, 3, 4, and Zero, and the remake, and you get Code Veronica X. That's a lot of Resident Evil goodness to go and find jam-packed onto one little lunchable size system. The Nintendo GameCube, for some reason, just now is starting to pick up momentum amongst gamers. I know a lot of collectors that are picking this shit up, and like the titles keep on rising in price, which is a shame because there's so many good games, I just wish that they'd get re-released so everybody can enjoy them without having to go and drop like fucking like a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to go and pick up some of the games, which is just way too fucking much. I'll emulate that shit for free whenever possible. But the GameCube, it's been an awesome system. I think it's just a shame that whenever it was out in its prime, nobody gave nearly as much of a fuck as they do now since they're being nostalgic as they did back then. The only way that this game room tour is gonna get any better is if we add some motherfucking Mode 7 and an FX chip to that shit. Now you're playing with power, superpower! We've got a bunch of Super Nintendo games, one of the best systems whenever it comes to role-playing games. While I love the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, the Super Nintendo is absolutely no slouch whatsoever in the RPG department, considering the fact that we have the likes of Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Super Mario RPG, Earthbound, we got Final Fantasy 3, we've got Final Fantasy 2, aka Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 6, respectively, because they're really fucking awesome. We got Breath of Fire 1 and 2. In Breath of Fire 2, as much as I love Breath of Fire 3, and it's one of the best RPGs I've ever played, and the very first one I ever played on PS1, 
Breath of Fire 2 is probably one of the best damn ones that the series has ever seen. It's just so fucking good. And it's weird to think that the first one was published by Squaresoft. That just... That, that's a mind fuck in itself. We have Act Razor 1 and 2. But you should probably ignore the existence of Act Razor 2 and just focus on a Act Razor 1 because that one's a million times better. Like a million times better. We were also fortunate enough to have the Donkey Kong Country series, which I love the shit out of it. All three games are excellent as hell in terms of platformers, but I always think about how much I did not like Kitty Kong. I mean, that diaper dumping banana shit having motherfucker was one of the ugliest goddamn things I had ever seen in 16-bit form. Just like, you need to fucking stop everything you're doing and shack for yourself right off a fucking cliff. Fucking terrible. I mean, Dixie Kong was already kind of, eh, I don't need all this shit. I mean, Donkey Kong was fine, Diddy Kong was fine, Dixie Kong was kind of like, this is going in weird deviant art directions. I'm not sure I want to do this. And then Kitty Kong. I'm like, fucking done for. But the series... Some of the best graphics of the time, some of the best 16-bit music. I shit you not, the compositions that were tossed out for all three of those games, especially the first one, dude, they are amazing. All the little critters that you can go and ride around on. Truth is, there's too many Super Nintendo games out there in the world. I mean, I personally don't feel like I have nearly as many as I would like to have, especially in box, because there's just... There's too fucking many. Like, I feel like I'm fortunate that I even have things like Lufia 2, Chrono Trigger, Dracula X, Breath of Fire, Super Mario RPG and shit, but the Super Nintendo is one of my favorite systems of all time, and for good reason. This was one of the biggest and best systems that I had played, and all my friends had Sega Genesis. I was the Super Nintendo guy until my one friend Pierce eventually got an SNES. But this system single-handedly transitioned me from being just a casual gamer to a little bit more of a hardcore gamer than the PS1 made me a dedicated diehard, holy fuck, everything's awesome type gamer. But dude, this entire system is packed to the brim and overflowing with awesome ass shit. Look through it, trust me, you'll be thankful.